I still remember how my entire understanding of the universe changed completely when I learned about and when I realized that you can indeed produce something out of nothing. Or in other words, you can actually create matter out of complete nothingness. Which by itself is already quite mind-blowing, but just the fact that it was proven so many times in the past makes this concept even more intriguing. And more importantly, it also transforms our understanding when it comes to the formation of the universe. There really did not have to be anything before the universe for it to actually suddenly form. But that's not really the entire point of this video, because today we're going to be talking about something slightly different. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent study you can find in the description below, that for the first time in history was able to physically reproduce what's known as the Schwinger effect. In a natural, finding a way to create particles, to create matter, by manipulating electromagnetic field. But before I talk more about the study, I guess let's get the basics first. So first of all, based on the iconic formula from Einstein, E equals mc square, we know that matter can become energy, but also energy can then turn into matter. I mean, for example, our sun, that produces fusion, works under the principle that some of the matter is going to be converted into pure energy. But theoretically, by having just enough energy in the limited amount of space, you can then turn this into various particles. Today this is often achieved in various very powerful particle accelerators that often do this by colliding things really fast, with the collisions then producing huge amounts of energy. But let's just say you wanted to remove all of the possible particles and even all of the possible energy from existence, or at least from this picture. So basically imagine that we start removing all of the stars, all of the gas, all of the possibly invisible objects, such as black holes and maybe some neutron stars, and eventually remove everything, including all of the energy. Basically we create what you would call empty space. And in this case, if there's really nothing here, no particles colliding, not even any kind of energy being produced, is anything going to ever form here? Well, the answer is actually yes. Even in the emptiness of the space that you see, the space itself is not going to be empty. It's going to be filled with what we refer to as quantum fields. And inside of these quantum fields, that essentially represents the entire universe, various particles and antiparticles are going to be constantly produced, but then annihilate themselves as soon as they essentially touch. Which means that even in perfect vacuum where there's basically nothing, no particles, no energy, no electromagnetic force, no gravity, the so-called maximum nothingness, we're still going to have various particle-antiparticle pairs always being created and always being eliminated. And there's a really famous experiment that proved this quite a while ago. And the experiment works as follows. Take any parallel plates, in this case conductive plates, and place them relatively close to one another. Now theoretically, we only expect the force to be experienced between these plates to be gravity. Basically, the mass created by the plates should maybe attract them to one another. But nearly 80 years ago, the famous Dutch physicist Hendrik Casimir proposed an idea that was actually physically proven back in 1996, with the proof itself being available in the description below. He proposed that between these plates, there are actually going to be way less particle-antiparticle pairs being created, and because of this, we actually expect a kind of a pressure coming from the outside as if there was air pressure with more force pushing on the plates than you would expect from pure gravity. And something that was then proven several times in different studies. We know that Casimir effect seems to work, which means that the particle-antiparticle pairs are actually being created everywhere, even in complete vacuum when there is nothing there, the actual space is not really empty. There's always going to be some amount of field energy that's going to exist in every volume of empty space. But because of the weirdness of quantum mechanics and because of the uncertainty principle formula that you see right here, there is no true way to know how much energy or even where exactly all of this is going to be produced. As a matter of fact, some forces, such as electromagnetism and gravity, in theory at least, can actually act throughout the entire universe. They don't have a limitation on how far away they can act. And at least in theory, if the gravity or electromagnetism are strong enough, these forces can rip certain particles apart and as a result produce other particles out of complete vacuum. Or to be more exact, in theory we can actually induce these effects and produce these particles if you apply strong enough force, where in some sense you have quantum mechanics, join the Einsteinian idea behind E equals mc square and turn some of this energy into actual matter. And when it comes to electromagnetism, the theory behind this is now known as the Schwinger effect. Which in a nutshell says that if you have a really, really strong electromagnetic field, the strength of the field itself is going to start ripping various particles and antiparticles out of vacuum 
and producing matter as a result. In this case, we expect various electrons and positrons to be spontaneously created in a very strong electromagnetic field. But this remained a theory for a very, very long time and for a very simple reason. Theoretically, it would require ridiculously strong polarization or extremely strong charge. In order to create these virtual particle-antiparticle pairs of the smallest possible particles, electrons and positrons, we would require powerful electric fields that have never been achieved in lab conditions, very similar in strength to what we find around various super super powerful objects such as neutron stars and certain types of black holes. And so even though in theory neutron stars could be doing this at all times, at least in some of the more extreme cases where the electric fields are just ridiculously powerful, here on Earth the situation is a little bit different. We just don't have any means to produce these very powerful fields, even using some of the most powerful reactors and lasers we have on the planet. And so for over 70 years this remained a theory, but that's until 2022. And in this case the scientists did something really clever. Instead of using three dimensions, they decided to rely on something in two dimensions, which would actually dramatically lower the amount of electric field needed to potentially observe these effects. And here it involved a really interesting setup using graphene a super strong material that basically is made out of carbon that's already known to produce a lot of intriguing effects with many of them discovered in the past. You might have heard of this material before because it produces some of the strongest things on the planet and it's even been suggested to be used in what we usually refer to as a space elevator. It's really strong enough to support everything by using what's known as a nanotube, but that's of course still in distant future. For now the scientists rely on the material's ability to essentially limit everything in two dimensions while at the same time also remaining extremely strong and practically unbreakable. And so because in this case they only had to deal with two dimensions and not three dimensions, the quantum particles that would be created here now had a lot less freedom and thus required much less powerful electromagnetic fields. And so by positioning these graphene sheets into what's known as a super lattice, with various layers creating periodic structures and then applying the electric field to all of this, they were able to observe an interesting interaction that kind of mimicked Schwinger effect. But instead of producing electrons and positrons, the electrons that were occupying space here were producing electrons and empty holes, where these holes were flowing in the opposite direction. Something that graphene allowed the scientists to do because it's extremely strong and is also able to withstand very powerful electric fields as well. And although this wasn't a perfect observation of actual matter being produced by electric fields as suggested by the Schwinger effect theory, in essence this was the closest representation we can create on the planet without physically going to a neutron star and trying to do it there. Which of course serves as another important proof of the idea behind quantum theory and the idea that you can indeed create something out of nothing. Although in this case it does involve a little bit of the electric field, but it just confirms all of the other ideas and once again confirms all of our understanding of the particle physics, understanding of the quantum mechanics and also brings a bit of Einstein into this as well. But more importantly it once again confirms that our general ideas about the universe don't seem to be too wrong, basically they are correct after all. And the universe could have just started by itself without anything. And so particles can spontaneously create even if there is absolutely nothing present out there. And even completely empty space can never truly be empty. It's always going to have some particles and antiparticles produced no matter what. But we'll talk more about some of these ideas in some of the future videos as well and you can actually find some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the show on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.